I'm gonna try and save you a bunch of time and hopefully a whole bunch of hassle. I'm gonna share with you some super crafty tips on how to rip out carpet. Then I'm gonna teach you a ridiculously quick method to remove this annoying tack strip. And then finally, I'm gonna show you a way that is up to 10 times quicker than getting down on your hands and knees and pulling out these annoying floor staples that hold down the underlay. And then, oh yeah, at the end of the video, I'm gonna take these fancy A9 cut proof gloves we're gonna make a fake finger and we're gonna see if we can slice it off with this utility knife. Let's get to the fun stuff and start tearing things apart here. Now, when it comes to ripping out the carpet, rather than trying to rip the whole thing up, roll it up and then drag it through the house, destroying all kinds of things, I like to cut it into manageable size strips. Normally I'll cut it into kind of three to four foot strips, which is about one step. To get this job done, you're gonna need a utility knife, some pliers, I like to wear gloves and a dust mask. Carpet is disgusting. You can see when you start rolling it up, all this little dust comes off and that dust is actually just human skin, dog dander, pet dander, who knows what it is. This carpet's 17 years old. You're gonna feel a lot better <laughs> with the dust mask on. And now because I like to cut this into strips, you just wanna check to see what is underneath this carpet before you start slashing. So go ahead, take the pliers. Grab one of the corners here and then just pull it up and have a little check. So underneath this carpet, we just have plywood. So we can cut through the carpet, through the underlay, right into that plywood and not have to worry about damaging anything. Let's go ahead and make that first cut about three to four feet off the wall. And if your knife blade's getting dull, this is the beauty of the Olfa utility knife. Go ahead and snap off the dull part and you'll have a nice, clean, fresh blade. And if you're still having trouble making the cut into the plywood, go ahead and throw that second hand on there for a little bit of extra force. Nobody is going to judge you. And then for the last part of the cut, just grab the pliers, pull the carpet out that was tucked under the baseboard and just hack it off with a knife. Now that that's all nicely cut into strips, it's time to roll out the beige carpet. That was not as funny as I was hoping for. Now you don't have to roll up the underlay with the carpet, but if you've made a nice cut down to the plywood, this is gonna save a bunch of time. When I finish the rolls, I like to throw some tape on there. You don't have to, but it sure is nice when you can just stack them up and then pack them through the house and they're not trying to unravel on you the whole time. Let's get on to removing the tack strip. Now, if you're replacing the old carpet with brand new carpet, you can leave these in place, save yourself some time and money. But if you're going to a different style floor, you've got to remove them. Let's go over the fastest way to take these off. Any kind of a small pry bar is gonna be extremely tedious. The Zenith trim puller is a decent tool for this job because you can just bend over and it's super easy to smack it under each of the nails. It's critical here to get under each of the nails, otherwise the tack strip is just gonna break apart and be a bit of a mess to pack out. But in my opinion, one of the greatest joys in my entire life is to use a spade shovel for this job. It is absolutely incredible how quick and efficient the spade shovel is. Just go ahead and slide that thing under each of the nails and give it a quick little pop. Once you get rolling with this shovel and you get into rhythm, this is real time right here. You can rip off one of these tack strips in under seven seconds. Last part of the job, pulling out the underlay staples. This can easily be the worst part of the entire job. Listen to me carefully here. You do not want to spend three to four hours on your hands and knees with a pair of pliers. What you want to use is a square edge floor scraper. If all you have is a razor scraper, you can take that razor out, flip it around and use the square edge and it will work just the same. If you need a scraper or any of the other tools that I've used in this video, I will put the Amazon links in the description. If you use the links, I will be eternally grateful. And then just take the scraper here. It's not rocket surgery. You just want to smash off the staples. It works surprisingly well. 
Just a blunt force trauma, just rips them right out of the ground. If you find a staple's not coming out right away, just hit it from a different angle and it will come out. This is also a great opportunity to chip off any of the lumps and bumps that the knuckleheads before you left on the floor. If you hit any nails with the scraper, just grab a hammer and pound them down. All right, let's do this glove cut test. Now these are A9 gloves. Let's get a fresh blade here. And uh, yeah, let's get that fake finger out here. Locker in place. Now we're gonna do a couple like whoopsie swipes and then we'll do like a super hard swipe and see if we can cut it right off. Yeah, that cut through the black it made a little bit of a cut. Those are some pretty decent swipes. Yeah, that cut through and all the way through. <laughs> Yikes, so you may not want to try and saw your finger off when you're wearing these gloves, but they do pretty good for a medium-sized swipe. And hey, if you want to save a bunch of time and effort ripping off your baseboards, go ahead and check out this video right over here. Now that everything's nicely cut up into strips, it's time to, oh my I can't say it. Oh, Whew. try it again. Take out that pest.